Good evening. My name is Doug Hinton. I'm pastor here at Hempfield Church of the Brethren. I want to thank you for joining us tonight for our midweek devotion. We'll be looking at Joshua 5 tonight, specifically 513. As you join, stop in, say hi, comment below. Um, I don't know about you, but I have missed the sunshine. So as we look forward to spring, n name one thing that you look forward to doing that we've not been able to do the last month or so. Uh, someone told me on Sunday we had 22 or 24 days straight of snow on the ground. So we'd be somewhere about the ballpark of 27 days straight, almost a full month. And we're about two and a half weeks out from when everything closed down last year. I can remember March 13th, it was Friday the 13th, uh, we decided not to hold service on the 15th, and uh, here we are almost a year later, uh, people are receiving vaccines, and uh, numbers are dropping, so that is good to see. Um, hello Tom. Uh, whether I say hi to you or not tonight, um, Sometimes I miss people. Name one thing that you look forward to doing as the spring comes, as the nice weather comes. Uh, I look forward to gathering with people outside. I look forward to having our outdoor services again. Uh, going hiking with my family, going on motorcycle rides. Um, I miss riding bike. That's, that's kind of my therapy. And when snow's on the ground, it's not a good time to ride. So we'll get started here in about a minute. And the question tonight is, are you for us or for our enemies? I find this question underlines a lot of conversations in the time that we're in. Could be around faith, could be around politics, um, could be around any number of subjects. And uh, I'm looking forward to digging into this. Uh, this came out of a reading that I'm doing. Um, I'm reading through Tony Evans' Oneness Embraced. Uh, I would recommend it. Um, it's It's been intriguing. It's been interesting to just hear his perspective and learn from his experience and how God has led him. Um, in this path of reconciliation and, and uh, the kingdom agenda. Uh, my wife said she's looking forward to digging in the dirt in the spring. She had a great garden last year. Um, our brother Tom said we are finally, uh, we'll be back in church on Easter Sunday. Got the first shot yesterday. That's awesome. Yeah, we've, we've been missing people. Some people have been keeping their, uh, they've been worshiping at home. Uh, as the numbers spiked, and we continue to hear from them. We continue to hear from people who are handwriting John with us. That's exciting. It's exciting to see not only the stories that we're familiar with, but where they fit into the timeline of Jesus' ministry, um, as recorded by John. So I would encourage you, if, if you've started John, or if you've not, to handwrite John with us. Uh, if you write 10 verses a day, I'm trying to find my copy. If you write 10 verses a day, you'll be done in about three months. Um, five verses a day would be about six. And you can you can write two and take a year. Uh, I'm in about chapter four, I believe. Some days I write a couple verses. Some days I write full passages. So... Uh, Riding a bike or three. Hello, Bushongs. What we, one of the things that we want to do here is help people hear the voice of the Good Shepherd. Um, and one of the best ways to do that is to dig into Scripture and understand what Jesus taught, what he, what he preached, what he lived out. Um, so if, if you're unable to write the full gospel, maybe you want to read through a chapter or read through a passage and write out one verse that stands out to you. That's been one of the encouragements in this time. 
Um, if you're more creative, you can write you can write passages out in different color ink. You can uh, make Jesus' words different. Um, when Jesus is speaking, I've tended to indent both sides so that it's highlighted. Um, but there, when we follow Christ, He will transform our lives. He will transform our families. He He can transform who we are so that we can be more like him but it means that we need to assess our decisions assess our upbringing assess our politics against him um but it's exciting it's life-giving and it will set you free so let's start let's uh before i get into it let's uh let's start with a word of prayer uh, f- uh before that i want to thank our brother josh last week for covering um, I had actually told him I was going to call someone else, and uh, not only did he cover, um, he also took the blame, which is uh, quite humbling, um, quite humbling. And I, I've just, I've, I've loved seeing our brother grow in Christ and proclaim the gospel um, and just speak words of truth. I just appreciate, I, I look forward to walking with him and how appropriate that we're in Joshua tonight. So let's start with a word of prayer. Father, I thank you for this evening. I thank you for my brothers and sisters here. I thank you for those who will watch later. I thank you for those who are hand copying John with us and the and the truth that you are giving them, the seeds that are being planted so that they can grow closer to you and that they can share those stories with those around them. I pray, Lord, that you bless this time, that you move freely among us, and that uh, we can go to bed refreshed we can get up in the morning refreshed by your word by your spirit that we may be encouraged and encourage one another to walk closer with you so i thank you father i lift this to you in christ's name amen so sides seem very important in our culture and as i was thinking about tonight you know i remember in eighth grade we were doing uh debates on north and south and so the teacher divided the class. I went to Lampeter Strasburg. I had uh, Gary Shrek and Goss. He divided the class, and, and half of us debated on the north, and half of us debated on the south. And there were some really um, passionate and intelligent um, classmates of mine that, that dug into the history, that dug into the arguments. And after a time... Uh, he made me a mediator because I, I started researching both sides of the argument. I, I, I like to be prepared. I want to know what people are going to say before they say them so that I know how to respond. Um, and so I became a mediator. And so I wasn't arguing one side or the other. And it was, it was just an interesting role. It seems God places us in roles and positions and... and areas because of the way we're built and sometimes we don't see it oftentimes other people see the way we're built before we do and there's a reason i bring that up the question comes out of joshua 5 and it's in verse 13 now just to give you some background the generation that that uh left egypt the generation that was delivered out of egypt by moses um, led by Moses, rather, it was delivered out by God. I mean, God did everything. Um, they needed only be faithful. <clears throat> that generation ended up rebelling against God in, in the wilderness and dying off. And the generation that came forth was Joshua's generation. Um, and so Joshua's generation was going to cross over into the promised land. And so... In the beginning of Joshua, he is told, wherever you lay the sole of your foot will be given back to you. And I, I remember this verse because in one of the churches I grew up in, in, in the Assembly of God, they would prayer walk, and, and this would be one of the verses that they would recite, that wherever they placed the sole of their foot would be given back to God. So, he knows, so the, the, the city in the story is Jericho. And he knows that the city is going to be given to him. All he has to do is place his foot in that city. And he knows, he knows that God is true to his word. But he's still a man. And so 
they cross over. Uh, God gives them the commandment to circumcise that generation, and God heals them. And they circumcise with flint knives. Um, if you don't know what circumcision is, you can uh, ask someone or look it up. Uh, being circumcised with a flint knife is not something I would look forward to. Um, they celebrate Passover, and the Passover is the last plague where they covered their doors and lintels um, in the blood of a lamb, in the blood of the lamb, and, and the, the angel would pass over their house. So they celebrate this Passover, and they're kind of preparing. They've, they've made this trip out of the wilderness, and they're preparing to go into the promised land. And Joshua is a commander. And so they, they camp out by Jericho because he's doing some recon work. And Tony Evans points this out uh, in his book. He's doing recon work, and we don't know how thick the walls are, but the fact that Rahab, you find Rahab in chapter 2 of Joshua, she allowed these two spies to stay in her place and then lowered them out of the wall. So if we understand correctly, her place was built into the wall. So we don't know how big the wall was, but if it was big enough for someone to live in, we know that they were pretty thick. And what's fascinating to me about Rahab, you know, um, in James and in Hebrews, she's called Rahab the harlot. Uh, not an upright person, according to the, the, the writers in the New Testament. And yet, she knew what God was doing. It had been revealed to her by God what he was doing, and, and this is why she was kind to the spies. She was kind to them so that they may return the favor, that they may give grace to her father's household. It's just an interesting side note. Um, so he's camping out. Joshua's camping outside Jericho, and he's trying to figure out how these walls are going to come down. I mean, just, it seems impossible in, in his mind. And so he's, 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 Doing recon work, he looks up and he sees a commander of an army with a sword drawn. In case you're unaware, that means typically you're in trouble, especially if you were unarmed or if your sword is sheathed. So, he looks up, he sees this man, and Joshua cuts straight to the point. And in 5.13 it says, now it came about when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, a man was standing opposite him with his sword drawn in his hand, and Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or are you for our adversaries? Are you for us or against us? Straight to the point. He needs to know what he's going to do right now. And the first part of the man's answer is no. Well, it really wasn't a yes or no question. He was looking for an A or B. Are you for us or against us? And the other one answers no. Verse 14 continues, Rather, I indeed come now as captain of the host of the Lord. And Joshua fell on the face of the earth and bowed down and said to him, What has my Lord to say to his servant? The captain of the Lord's host said to Joshua, Remove your sandals from your feet, for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. Now, I've, I've talked with this passage, I've talked about this passage with my ministry team, uh, with Laura and, and uh, Josh and uh, Jeff, and they've made some interesting observations. So first off, this man says no, and then he lets him know, He's not there for either side. He is there as a representative of God's army. And what seemed impossible to Joshua, the man gave him a plan. He said, this is what you were to do. Now in this story, you notice he takes his sandals off. One observation made yesterday was, the fact that the holy is found in the ordinary. The holy is found in the everyday. We need only be attentive and look for it. And Tony Evans points to the fact that it's a reminder to us that dust we are and dust we will return. That we are the Lord's. That anything that the Lord wants to accomplish, he will accomplish. 
And so it seemed impossible to bring these walls down. And so what this man says, he says, this is what I want you to do. I want you to take all of the all of the men, all the men in the army with the priests out front, and I want you to walk around this city once a day for six days. And on the seventh day, walk around that city seven times, blow the trumpets, and then all in unison, in one voice, shout, and the walls will come down, and you can go straight in. Jeff reminded us on Sunday, if you haven't watched Sunday's service, I would encourage you to look it up either on Facebook or on YouTube, that what is impossible for man is possible with God. But what I want to get at tonight is the are you for us or against us and who the man was for. Because we see division a lot in our society. Maybe it's around a topic. Maybe it's political. Are you red or are you blue? In the church, it's are you liberal, progressive, or are you conservative? You know, we see these divisions all the time. And what Evans points to is that it's not about sides with God. It's about him. What is his purpose? And so it's interesting, when we follow Jesus, and people are trying to figure out what side we're on, our response should be, we are for Christ. He is our teacher, he is our master, he is our Lord. He is the one who called us friend. He actually called his, his disciples brothers and sisters. It is not about the side, it is about Christ. And who did Christ come for? Who did he die for? For whosoever, whosoever shall believe in him. He died for all. It wasn't about sides. It was about his purpose. And I found this so intriguing. Because when we focus on the sides, when we focus on the division, oftentimes anger, uh, pride, um, division, malice, gossip, they spread. But when we focus on Christ, then peace, joy, love, patience, self-control come into play. And when we follow Jesus, it means that we need to assess everything else, all of our decisions, all of our choices, all of our life against his teaching. And sometimes it's not a simple answer. Sometimes we may be looking for a choice and instead hear, no. Or like, Jesus, is it A or B? No. But this is the awesome thing. When we stand with him, when we focus on him, the things that seem impossible become possible. The things that seem insurmountable, there's no way that we're going to get through this pandemic together. There's no way I'm going to be able to pay my bills this month. There's no way this relationship can be healed. The scars are too deep. He makes a way. What is impossible for man is possible with God. It no longer becomes about the sides. And if you notice, in our society, in both, and I've seen this both in, uh, in, in uh, politics and in the church, it's more about being right. It's more about knowledge. But Jesus' command was not to know him, it was to love as he loved. Not just to know him. His commandment to his disciples was that he, they loved one another as he loved them. So we need to take that knowledge and put it in perspective of love. It doesn't remove what is true, but rather enlightens it. And we can see the bills paid. We can see a path forward through a pandemic. We can see steps on how to heal that relationship. 
And when I talk about healing relationships, if, if, it's, if it's abusive or dark, it doesn't mean repeating the sins of the past or putting yourself in danger. But learning how to forgive and set boundaries so that it no longer defines you, but Christ defines you. The healing defines you. I've talked about this in the past healing. It's like, a, it's like a scar. I have a scar here on my chin where a wound once was. A scar reminds us to move forward. That healing can occur. But it also reminds us sometimes of mistakes we've made or things that have been done to us. And so that we don't make those same choices. We don't put ourselves in compromising situations again. Wisdom can grow out of that. But before we do all of this, our focus must be right. And our focus is on Christ. Are you for the left or the right, the red or the blue, the progressive or the conservative? I'm for Christ. And it can be lonely sometimes. I've been shunned by the left and rebuked on the right. I've been told I've loved the last two presidents before this one. All because I'm asking about scripture or something that Jesus taught. Jesus doesn't fit neatly into our boxes often. What he does is blow them apart and show us a new way, his way. And his way will set us free. So that when things seem impossible, he will say, follow me. I am the way. I am the truth, and I am the life. And we make it through. And not only do we make it through, we invite others to come along. Because our lives have been transformed. The generational chains have been broken. We, we've accepted how God has made us. And so what's interesting to me when, when, my, when my, my teacher made me the mediator in that class, I didn't understand why he would do such a thing. I wanted to argue aside. And now as I grow older and as I grow closer in, to Christ in my faith and as I'm sharpened by brothers and sisters here, as I'm sharpened by brothers and sisters online, I'm starting to understand that might be how I'm made. And he saw it 25, 30 years ago. So, my question to you tonight is not, are you for us or against us? But it is, will you stand with Christ? Will you follow him through thick and thin? The one who, upon, who promised abundant life and persecutions. The one who said that we would go through trials, not to worry that he would give us the words to say. Will you stand with Jesus and follow him and allow him to show you the way? I pray that you may be blessed tonight. I pray that you may dig into John with us that you may hand copy it. If you've not done so, subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Facebook, like our page. I love hearing the Good Shepherd's voice come through different people. So I thank you for joining us tonight. I pray that you may be blessed this week. I pray that you may be a blessing. And above all, get outside. Get outside and be in the sunshine. It's been a long and dark winter, but spring is coming, and so is new life. This is your brother in Christ.
Take care.